Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the public hearing to order. Uh, and we do have some of the applicants have joined us this evening as delegations, so I'll read out the statement. The council meeting is being convened to hold public hearings on land use matters. The public and anyone who believes that their interest in property is affected by the agenda items may speak or present written submissions. Those of you who wish to speak should, after being recognized by the chair, begin by clearly stating your name and your address. If you have a written submission, please make this known at the beginning. Everyone will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at the hearing. No one should feel discouraged from making their views known. Any, just hang on a sec. There, there you go. Uh, no. Any person who wishes to present a written submission may, uh, to council may do so. The essence of the submission will be read out by the city clerk. Written submissions will be retained by the clerk and form part of the record of the hearing. Each speaker may address the hearing a maximum of twice. The length of your first presentation will be limited to 10 minutes, providing your comments are relevant and the hearing is not being obstructed. Any additional presentation, which must be on new information, will be limited to a maximum of three minutes. Members of council may ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the function of council members during a public hearing is to listen to the views of the public, not to debate the merits of matters with citizens. Debate by members of the council will occur at the subsequent vote. So the order of the proceedings normally is going to be, firstly, the city clerk will briefly describe the matter under consideration. Then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make a brief presentation up to 10 minutes. Then the city clerk will identify any written submissions received. Fourthly, oral submissions from the public will be heard and any further written submissions will be received. And finally, the hearing will be closed and matters may be considered. Please observe these rules. If you have any concerns with the manner in which the hearing is being conducted, direct your comments to the chair. So Mr. Clerk, first item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The first item is proposed amendment to single family lot size policy 5420. Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500 8, Amendment Bylaw 10035 RZ 17-784927. The location of this application is 10200 and 10220 Railway Avenue. The applicant's name is Raman Cooner. The purpose of policy 5420 is that single family lot size policy 5420 in section 3647 adopted by council on October 16th, 1989, be amended to exclude 5026 William Road, Williams Road, and the 45 properties bordering Railway Avenue between Williams Road and 10700 Railway Avenue. The purpose of the zoning amendment is to rezone the subject property from the two unit dwellings RD1 zone to the coach houses RCH1 zone to permit the property to be subdivided to create three single family lots, each with a coach house suite with vehicle access from the rear lane. Uh, this bylaw was given first reading on June 10th, 2019. Uh, went to public hearing July 15th, 2019 and was referred back to staff. All right, uh, is the applicant here this evening? I see Mr. Cooner has come in by Zoom. Could you let him in? Is he in? Sorry, he's in. Okay, there you are. Did you want to make a presentation or just await questions? Uh, I'll just wait the uh, question. Okay. Uh, so we got some written submissions, this letter from Mr. Kevin Krieger uh, dated today, no, February 12th. Is there anything else that we've received? Any other written submissions? No, Mr. Mayor, that's everything. Okay. Uh, anybody, well, there's nobody else signed up to uh, speak to us on this matter. Uh, so may I have a council motion on single family lot size policy? Move, cut, move single family lot size policy be revised. All right. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Uh, okay, we'll call the question then. All those in favor? Uh, <clears throat> Councillor Day, you have your hand up. We're using the, um, oh, there you are. Uh, my bad, sorry. Okay, Councillor Day. 
I have a question of either staff or the proponent. Um, is this an appropriate time to ask the question? Let's ask the staff first. Okay. Um, I see on page PH uh, 49 that there is three parking spots per lot, two of which are tandem parking. I'm very concerned about the lack of parking. Um, is it possible to add a fourth parking spot on each lot? Um, the, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, uh, through the chair to um, um, to Councillor Day. Um, there, there doesn't appear to be um, room to add additional parking spaces on the site. However, I would note that with any tandem parking spaces uh, provided, that there is a covenant, a legal agreement on title to ensure that it is not converted to, um, to any other use. In addition, I'd like to mention that the, uh, the proposal does comply with the current parking requirements, which is two spaces for the principal unit and one space for the coach house unit for each of the three lots. And the two spaces for the um, uh, principal unit are tandem parking. And so um, my concern is if you look at the map, this is a very tight area, and we're going to have people jockeying cars out of these three lots with the tandem situation. And, and, I, and I read um, some of the letters from the neighbors, and they're very concerned. They say that the subdivision to the east, a railway historically known as Holly Park is already very crowded with vehicles. I live on Holly Mount, and during the weekdays, it's fair to clear up the cars, but in the evenings and on the weekends, it's very crowded, completely used for parking, and uh, they've asked staff to check into that. Has checked, staff checked into the evenings and the weekends and the parking situation on Holly Mount? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Day, um, in, in regards to the, the laneway specifically, um, as, as you may be aware, parking is not permitted by bylaw, um, and staff have followed up since the previous uh, public hearing in 2019. There was some enforcement that was uh, com completed uh, to look at any illegal parking in the lane that would further constrict the, that pathway, and there were three tickets issued within um, about a week following, and with a few months later in a follow-up, there were only about two tickets issued uh, and ongoing. It would be on, on a complaint basis, but they did appear to be um, improving. Um, however, uh, um, yeah, that, sorry, that completes my comment. Uh, so my question wasn't about the lane. It was about Holly Mount, because if you look at the map, um, it's pretty clear that the people who live in these three lots are going to be accessing Holly Mount for parking. And given that it's already a parking problem, how are we going to address that? Through your worship to Councillor Day, maybe I can um, address this. Um, I'm, what staff could do is we could do um, a study of, uh, of the parking that is going on there now. I, I do note that the um, the lots do have enough parking to support the, the dwelling units that are on them, so there shouldn't be a need for street parking. But um, if there are complaints that the, that there's too much, uh, too many people parking on the street, we can do a study on that if, if council asks us to. Well, we've already received those complaints, and I can tell you when I had uh, two teenage daughters, we had five cars. And I'm just concerned that since we cannot add more parking, what kind of nightmare are we creating for the people on Holly Mount and, to be honest, the people in these three new houses? So I, I would ask that we refer this back in a, a study of what is the situation right now. And uh, so I so move that we refer it back no, to staff. No, no, no. I'll come back to you on the referral. Councillor Wolf. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, I really appreciate the, the comment uh, or comments made there by Councillor Day, uh, and I'll be supporting her, her referral motion later. But before that, um, re reading the response uh, that from the public, I have a couple questions to staff. Uh, so we just got the letter um, today, and one of the, um, the, the items mentioned there is that the previous time, I guess it was 2019, a larger area in the neighborhood was notified that this was coming uh, for discussion. But for this tonight, only a, a 50 meter uh, around the, the, these two properties on railway were notified. Um, could staff just clarify the, the change in, in notification that's occurred from, from before to now? Yeah, 
Through your worship, I can speak to that question. Uh, this was identified, uh, Councillor Wolf, uh, in 2019. Uh, the notification for this uh, application was uh, done over and above the requirements. Uh, it was sent out to uh, all residents, uh, all, all properties within the uh, proposed lot size policy area. Uh, on further review and preparation for this public hearing, it was determined that notification within a 50 meter, ra uh, 50 meter radius was the only required uh, notice for this application. Uh, that was due to the land being located on an arterial road uh, on Railway Avenue. So it meets the, uh, this notice met the uh, uh, section 237 of the zoning bylaw requirements. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. I have further questions uh, to the chair, uh, to uh, staff. Um, so, one is, I, if there's a referral, I, I make, I'd look to make that a change uh, so that it goes back to the same area that was notified before. Um, second item from that, uh, or reminder from that letter that came in today, was the 80 person uh, petition from people living in the neighborhood. And there was a, a number of great photos in there that provided examples of what laneways look like in other parts of Richmond. So uh, if there is a referral back on this and, and, or, and or a transportation study, uh, I think uh, some very valid points were demonstrated in that letter, such as upgraded lighting, signage, drainage improvements, speed, no parking signs, sidewalks, crosswalks, speed humps. I've, I visited this laneway, and when I went there, uh, there was a vehicle that was parked blocking the way. Uh, and the p person ran out from being inside because they had no other place to park. The, the, when we build the coach houses, like these ones are allowing, they go right to the back of the property. There is no pullover in, in onto your property on a side angle, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it an even greater um, uh, issue for, for um, the residents and those who use the, the, the laneway. Okay. I think uh, that the... Okay, Councillor Lou. You're muted. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I hear what some of my fellow counselors are saying, and I, I agree that I think we should be looking at adding some signage in this area and also looking at adding some enforcement. Certainly um, in my parents' neighborhood over by Shell and Williams, um, there's a whole bunch of new houses that have gone in, and they, only, and they have either coach houses or suites in them. And driving up and down that alley doesn't seem to be an issue. So those people have moved in. They moved in on, on the arterial roadside. They understood that they only had so many parking spots. And you can drive up and down there all day long, and there's no cars parked there. So, And it doesn't seem to have infiltrated the rest of the neighborhood either. So, um, you know, this one's already been sent back, and this one's been in process for a year and a half already on top of what it was already in process for. Um, you know, I think... We need to really consider what we're doing here. We're on an arterial road. We've got bike lanes. We've got uh, public transit right in front. These places are set up to be able to use other modes of transportation. It's not the only mode of transportation available. It's just to pile it up with cars. Um, you know, I think if you're buying a house and you see how many parking spots it's got, you buy accordingly and you buy according to your needs. You don't keep buying then more cars and trying to figure out where you're going to stack them all. So um, I think we should push this forward, but I also think uh, staff should be directed to look at and improve the signage in the area, and we need to pay more attention to our enforcement in the area because it's not an issue in other neighborhoods. And it seems to be an issue in this neighborhood, but um, it's, it's not the fault of the new people moving in that haven't even moved in and built the house yet. The existing people are already parking all over the place, those are the people that should be punished in this situation, not the person who's trying to build a house. Okay, we'll talk about a traffic study in due course. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Day, you wanted to refer this back. Yes, um, I'm satisfied that there's enough um, opposition to this particular development, and I think if we can deal with some of the what traffic is your issues... Motion? Can... What is your My motion? motion is to refer... My motion is to refer it back so we could do a traffic study and look at alternative options for parking, additional uh, parking. Okay, is that seconded? Okay, so it's seconded. Um, I'm not going to support that referral. I will support adding on another tranche to the 
consideration where we ask staff to do that. But I take Councillor Liu's point of view. Uh, you know, it's been a couple, two or three years here. It's time. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, let's see, Councillor Steves on the referral. Uh, actually, I had my hand up before the referral, so you missed me, but I'll speak on the referral uh, and tell you what I was going to say before the referral. Uh, I'm not in favor of, I'm not in favor of the refer referral. If I was to refer it or to oppose it, I would want to do so to get higher density. But I've already been outvoted on that a few weeks ago. But I think we need to increase the density as much as possible, reduce the parking as much as possible, and get first uh, a, a really good bus route in this area, and secondly, a future LRT. I will be supporting it. I don't like it because I don't think there's enough density, and I think there is too much parking. I think that uh, a referral would, would be dead wrong. Okay. Um then I'm going to call the question on the referral. All those in favor? Uh, so it's Councillor Wolf, Councillor Day in favor. Those opposed? Uh, so it's with all the other councillors opposed. Um, I suggest that we, from what, what you've been talking about, we would, ask, um, we would ask staff to do a traffic study in the surrounding area of this property including the issues uh, surrounding parking, signage, and enforcement. Is that what you want? So i move that then. Moved and seconded. Discussion on that? All the... Uh, Councilman? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, and I would ask that uh, staff do a look at the parking on Hollymont Drive on the inner. Not just the lane, but also inside that subdivision. I think it's very important that we look at it because that's the perpetrators of parking. They, it's not those. In, there's nobody in the lane, so I think we need to do do that as inside the the, the subdivision there okay. that are adjacent to the lane. Okay, thank you. Why don't I add the words at the end, including the lane and on Holly Mount? Okay. Thank you. That's what you're talking about, I think. Okay, so. On that, to ask for the traffic study, et cetera, all the, oh, we have more speakers. Councillor Liu. Uh, thank you, to the Chair. I, I'd also like to say that um, staff should work with the school, McKinney School. The, a lot of people are picking up and dropping off on Hollywell, so they're going behind. So they're going through the neighborhood from Holly Mount into the neighborhood and picking up and dropping off on Hollywell, which is the back side of the school. I've seen it a number of times in the morning, afternoon, a steady stream of cars flowing through, basically in, in the side of the school that wasn't designed to have the parking lot, uh, the traffic coming through it. The traffic's designed to go up and down La Sam that's got the, the through fare, and uh, people are picking up and dropping off on the wrong side. We've had a similar situation at Westwind where they had to communicate with the parents and, re and ex explain to them yet again that pick up and drop off is supposed to happen at one point of the school and not all over on the back sides of the school. So I think it's important that, um, you know, the school is part of this process too because that's where a lot of traffic is coming from. There's a lot of kids going to the school that aren't right. in the neighborhood. All right, so, so we can give that direction to staff to also look at that feature. So uh, let's see now. So we're on the referral or asking for that traffic study. So, oh, Councillor Day. You're muted. Got it. Okay, sorry. The, the menu is popping up for some reason. Um, can we add to that letters to the residents of that quadrant in Holly Park? Because I really think that they would like to get involved in this traffic study. And if we wanted to have any kind of validity, we need to have input from the people who live there. I think that staff would take it under advisement to see what kind of consultation they need. Uh, under the circumstances, so let's let's call the question on the on this traffic study issue. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? It is carried. And then a further motion then on second and third reading. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion. All those in favor of second and third? Any opposed? It's 
Carried with Councillors Day and Wolf and Steve's opposed. Okay. Uh, opposite. Me. <laughs> okay. Number two, uh, the next item, uh, Councillor McPhail, you want to make a declaration. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. My husband, through a business interest, um, so has an interest in a business that owns industrial land in Richmond. All right. So we'll excuse you for the moment. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The second item is official community plan by law 9 Zero, zero, zero. Amendment Bylaw 10180 and Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500 zero, zero. Amendment Bylaw 10181 Industrial Land Intensification Initiative. The location of this uh, item is citywide on land zoned and or designated for industrial or mixed employment use. This is an application by the City of Richmond. The purpose of the OCP designation amendment is to revise policies as they relate to industrial and mixed employment land to allow limited retail in the industrial business park and industrial retail zones as an accessory use for manufacturing businesses only. Allow the consideration of increasing the maximum permitted density from 1.0 floor area ratio FAR to 1.5 FAR subject to a rezoning process provided the site is a minimum 2.5 hectare in area, is close to major transportation infrastructure, is not adjacent to residential uses, and has satisfied transportation and servicing issues, and introduce development permit guidelines for industrial buildings that are multi-story and have uh, external vehicular access to the upper floors. The purpose of the zoning amendment is to revise regula regulations as they relate to industrial zone properties by recognizing and regulating ancillary office space for defined industrial uses, allowing limited retail in the IB and IR zones as an accessory use for manufacturing businesses only, introducing newly defined permitted industrial uses to reflect emerging industries, reducing parking requirements for select defined industrial uses, Increasing the building height coverage from 60% to 70% for industrial zone sites outside of the city centre. And increasing the maximum building height from 12 metres to 16 metres for industrial zone sites outside the city centre. But maintain the 12 metre maximum building height for industrial zone sites within 50 metres of a residentially zoned lot. First reading of this item took place on January 11th, 2021. All right, so the city of Richmond is the applicant. Is there anybody from the city? Did you want to say anything about this? All right, written submissions. We got a couple, didn't we? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have two written submissions. Uh, the first one is from Dwayne uh, Drobot um, with Can West Development. Um, he, they're an industrial land stakeholder company and it's expressing support for the application. Uh, the next one we have is from Alyssa Bailey with Omricon, uh, another industrial land stakeholder company, um, providing an overview of the proposed changes from the company's perspective. Um, in fact, that letter you talked about from Dwayne, Dwayne Drobot, that's actually Joe Carrera who signed the letter and he's, he's on here. My apologies from okay. Joe Carrera, thank you. Um, so I see that we've got Joe Carrera here. Um, so uh, let's, let's just ask you, uh, Mr. Carrera, is there anything you wanted to add? I think your letter is pretty self-explanatory. I was hoping to read it into the record, uh, Mayor Brody, if possible. It, it will be in the record. I mean, we have it okay. and it'll be attached. Okay, um, I think all I would add again is um, to thank staff for putting together this uh, report and these recommendations. We have, um, we have a project under construction now um, on nine and a half acres in Richmond, over 250,000 square feet of industrial, much needed industrial space. And um, we have another project coming, coming up in Richmond. These types of amendments just, uh, 
help to to modernize the current zoning regulations and create flexibility for the um, for the industrial users uh, on on land that, quite frankly, is becoming quite scarce. So again, just thanks to the staff. Um, uh, Con West uh, is in full support of these amendments, and we are ple pleased to be part of the um, Industrial Lands Intensification Task Force and Metro Vancouver's Industrial Land Task Force. So thank you, everybody, for, uh, for your consideration on this matter. All right, thank you. Um, now, Councillor Steve... the amendment bylaw. No, just a minute, just a minute. Councillor Steve, you have your hand up. Was that a question of staff or a question of this delegation? Uh, no, I, I want to make a comment. Okay, so... so uh, I'll move the adoption. Okay, so the adoption has been moved, and Councillor McNulty, I, you, you're second. Second. That? Okay. Okay, go ahead, uh, Councillor uh, Steves. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Uh, this has been under discussion in the Planning Committee of Metro Vancouver probably for eight or nine years. It came to fi a final uh, report uh, a, a few weeks ago, both through the pl Planning Committee and the Climate Change Committee, uh, Richmond was commended for going ahead with this proposal we're dealing with tonight at the, at the uh, last meeting of climate change, I think which was on Friday. So we're, we're, we're at the head of the pack by adopting this proposal, and I just thought I'd let, let everybody know, not often does uh, Metro Vancouver uh, tell the rest of the communities what, what anybody else is doing, but they did uh, mention that Richmond was, 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 going, was uh, proposing this. So I, I'm very much in support of it. Councillor Day. Um, a great report, and I'm extremely happy to see densification of industrial land. I think it's incredibly important. And I have to say that allowing for sales room, but only for products made on site, is brilliant. I love that we're including, including uh, microbreweries and um, allowing increased height. So I'm, I'm very happy about the whole report. But I'm a little bit confused because the satisfaction of industrial um, parcels like this has been on the agenda for council. And on one hand, on page 76, it states, no proposed policy directions related to land tenure at this time. But on page 78, it states, the staff will look at the possibility of industrial stratification. Can you give me a clear sense of what it is, uh, our position is on stratification? Through your worship to Councillor Day, uh, as you indicated in the report, Councillor Day, uh, the eight, right now we're not proposing any changes to industrial stratification. Uh, we've outlined some of the issues. There's pros and cons to it, and it's an issue that we flagged that we will be reviewing. It will be part of the package that we'll be reporting back to Council within the next two years. Okay, so um, depending on what happens, you'll decide whether the position of staff will be pro or con stratification. Through your worship, Councillor Day, that's correct. It's an issue that we're still working on. Uh, Metro Vancouver has actually done some research on that issue as well. We understand it's also it's, it reflects a, a healthy uh, business uh, uh, climate uh, with allowing stratification, but we also understand that uh, there might be some opportunities to introduce some limitations to it uh, to address uh, council goals. So once again, uh, we'll be reviewing that issue as we move further, as it wasn't part of the original ILII study. Okay, so, so when that comes forward, what I would, my question would be, is would be, would be looking at one of the limitations being that they must be owner-occupied as opposed to being investor, you know, uh, investment by a foreign buyer, for example. So uh, I look forward to future reports, and I'll be absolutely supporting this justification. Thank you. Councillor Wolf. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I have a number of uh, questions to staff um, on this uh, as a result of the um, letters we received, the two that were just mentioned, um, and also uh, an update on the, um, the staff noted in the minutes from January 5th. There were four items, and I don't recall getting any uh, memos on them, so I'm just curious if, if any staff member can comment. Uh, on the following. So sustainable, sustainability de uh, department mentioned that they would report on sustainability initiatives for industrial land and that it was forthcoming. 
how, uh, where, how far away are we for that forthcoming? Oh, I, oh. To, to your worship's counsel, Wolf, I'd have to defer that question to uh, Mr. Peter Russell. I'm not sure if he's on the line at the moment. Or Norm Collins, uh, can you help us out? Or Norm? Yeah. Uh, through your worship to uh, Councillor Wolf, um, just uh, going back to, uh, uh, I guess, general purposes committee where, where you raised this question, when, just went through the uh, number of initiatives that are underway at a staff level. Um, uh, around buildings of all sorts in our community energy and emissions plan, uh, moving towards our 2030 emission reduction target and our 2050 uh, net zero decarbonization strategy. Uh, that's going to be outlaid in our community energy and emissions plan, our new updated plan, which is uh, earmarked for uh, second quarter of this year to come forward to council. Um, but uh, concurrently, we're working with the uh, uh, Energy Step Co Council of which uh, um, staff sit on uh, and are working with uh, other local governments in the province and all that to, uh, and, and in, our, in a program of work for the STEPCO Council is over the next 18 months to look at industrial land and extend the step code, the BC Energy step code to that land use type, whereas now there's uh, no step code or energy efficiency options for that. Um, so hopefully that uh, is successful over the next 18 months and we can bring that into regulation ideally for a 2022 uh, uh, building bylaw update. And then with respect to zero emission vehicles, um, <clears throat> we're currently, um, there's a preliminary study that's been completed in Metro Vancouver that's looked at uh, what would be our minimum electric vehicle, level two electric vehicle uh, infrastructure requirements for uh, commercial as well as industrial land uses. And a preliminary report sets some targets for staff parking as for visitor parking. Uh, we're looking to take those forward into consultation in uh, Q1 and Q2 of this year uh, with respect to bringing those in as a proposed, um, I guess, land use bylaw amendment uh, for um, a level two EV charging readiness minimum requirements for that land use type. Great, I appreciate that. Those were my follow up two questions on that, uh, on the minutes. So you, you noted it well, thank you. Um, next item, uh, our next uh, point on this was from the letter that we received from a member of the public on, on this. And their um, uh, question about the provision for food and beverage uh, amenities in industrial land. Uh, how, how does that fit in? Um, I know for myself, uh, almost half of my work, work years were on industrial land in Richmond out of various sites. Um, so I, I'm aware that many people leave their site to go on the roads and go densify other areas where if it was a cafe or something was provided, um, where does that fit into this? And on the same note, just outdoor amenity space, uh, it's not really um, inclusive in this intensification initiative and we'll lose the opportunity if the building footprints take all those spaces because what we're seeing now is they're building it right to the property line where you can right, barely right. walk with your shoulder Let's line. Let's go to staff on this. Through your worship to Councillor Wolf, um, through the stakeholder consultation, we did hear that having employee amenities in industrial areas was very important, including food and beverage. The city's zoning bylaws, as is, do permit those uses. Um, for example, restaurants, childcare, fitness facilities in all industrial zones throughout the entire city currently, uh, in order to provide those amenities for the employees who work in those areas. Regarding outdoor amenity space, perhaps um, my planning colleague could comment further, but I don't believe there would be anything prohibiting a industrial developer from providing that space in a development. All right. Is that it? Okay. Let's go. No, 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 I'm, no sorry. I, I still have a few more points. I think staff is going to huh? comment on that. Was okay. Mr. Sorry. Through, yeah, through, through your worst, through your worst of the council, Wolf, uh, just to, uh, to finish off the answer that uh, Ms. Ferlin was providing. Uh, there's no changes to uh, outdoor amenities. If they, uh, a builder wanted to add some outdoor amenities for staff, um, they, they may do so. As Ms. Ferlin also noted too, child care and restaurants are allowed uses in our industrial zones and that's not being uh, changed at all. So certainly those services could be provided in an industrial park. Councillor Wolf, how many more okay. questions okay. do you have? Uh, I, I think I only had maybe one more question, okay. and I guess I don't have time for my comments then. Yes, you do, but but 
But oh. the point has to be made. You've had these letters for weeks. You could, you probably asked some of the questions already in prior hearings, and you could also consult with staff out of the meeting time to get your answers. I mean, I think that's what most councillors do. And I'll just leave it at that. You've got one more question then. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question I will uh, leave it with then uh, is, um, would it not make more sense to not send mixed messages and have the updates that staff just mentioned are coming in Q2 so that we're not al allowing right away a whole bunch of uh, proposals that don't go through uh, city development permit, council development permit. Instead, they'll go straight to being building approval. Uh, and, and and then we're going to get some of these developing uh, developments with with features or without features that everyone else will have to then require. So it, we're creating this little grandfather window where industrial land is going to take space from other features in our community, other things that the workers need, and other things that we we all benefit from, not just the the enclosed warehouse space. So it would it not make more sense to defer this back until we get the seep um, uh, reports the uh, councillor wolf those are questions for this council okay that is not a question for staff as to whether we should refer it it's a question for the council if the councillor doesn't feel it's wise to pass something they want to refer it back they can do so we can do so but but staff will not be commenting on the viability of a referral as a strategy i'm I apologize, I had to make my question long-winded there when I only had one left, and so I'll make a referral when the time comes. Okay. Anyone else? All right, the time has come. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a referral that um, the, this item uh, be delayed until the reports are, are, are provided on the Community Emissions and Energy Plan. Is it seconded? It is not seconded. Oh, you know, it is seconded. Okay, we're gonna call the question on this referral. All those in favor? All those opposed? It is, it is defeated with Councillors Wolf and Day in favor. Okay, on the main question, on the main motion, all those in favor? Those opposed? It's carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. All right, then I'll just, I'm gonna go through these one by one, unfortunately. I think I have to do it that way. So on number two, the action on the- Action on second, so moved. Moved and seconded. Discussion, all those in favor? Any Aye. opposed? Any opposed? Carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. Action on third Move reading. third reading. Moved and seconded, discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? It is carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. Move adoption. Okay. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? It's carried with Councillor Wolf opposed. Second and third reading. Move second and third on eight, 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 second. Eight, one. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? It is carried with Councillor Wolf opposed in the adoption of the zoning 8500. So moved. Second. Okay, second moved and seconded discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed that it is carried with Councillor Wolf opposed? Mr. Clerk, final item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number three is Richmond Zoning Bylaw 8500, Amendment Bylaw 10224, RZ 17792242. The location of this application is 6520 Williams Road. The applicant is Gradual Architecture, Inc. The purpose uh, is to rezone the subject property from the single detached RS1E zone to the low density townhouses RTL4 zone to permit the development of eight townhouse units with vehicle access from Williams Road. First reading of this bylaw took place on January 11th, 2021. All right. 
Now, I've got down here that we have Ian Guan, applicant for gradual architecture. Are you on the line there, Mr. Guan? You're probably muted. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, you're Hello, Mr. hi. You're Mr. Guan. Did you want to make a presentation or just await questions? No, I'm, in, I'm just waiting for the questions. Thank you. All right. Any written submissions? None, Your Worship. All right. Um, and there aren't any delegations Move. to speak to it. Move second and third. Moved and second. seconded. Any discussion? On that, uh, all those in favor? Uh, any opposed? Oh, oh, just a minute. God, I'm sorry. This Hi. is. I'm. I'm sorry. I miss you guys because this is. <laughs> it's very faint on my screen. That's what what's happening. So anyway, you'll wave your hands if I miss you. Um, so first of all, I've got <laughs> Councillor Day, then Councillor Wolf. Councillor Day. Yeah, thank you very much. I just want to confirm with staff, I know there are some third floor decks. And from what I understand, looking at the drawings, they're only going to overlook the parking lot and the park. Can I confirm that none of these third floor decks are going to be looking down onto residential homes? Uh, through the chair to, um, to Councillor Day, uh, that is correct. They're uh, contained within the, within the roof line. Excellent. Good. I just want to make sure that it's nothing worse than having someone looking down at you. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Councillor Wolf. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship, I think my question would be better suited to the uh, applicant. Could I ask to them? All right. Um, Mr. Okay, Guan, thank go ahead. Th thank you. Uh, my, my question, uh, Mr. Guan, is I, I don't know if you have the report in front of you, but on our page, uh, public hearing uh, 137, it shows a kind of a blueprint of the tree retention and removal plan. And I know at the development purpose, sorry, development um, permit panel, there'll be some reassessment of tree number seven. My yeah. question is on this page, it refers to a term I've never seen before. It's called uh, grasscrete. I'm yeah. not sure if that's a combination of grass and concrete. Could you explain the use of that oh. term for that area? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Uh, grass crate uh, was used to do uh, to uh, the purpose of using this kind of material is that we're trying to reduce the the hard surface area to get get like more impermeable area on the site to allow like more uh, like a rain rain water infiltration into the ground. So that's why. We don't use the pavers, pavers because you know there's no uh, permeability, right? Now uh, we're using grass grade. Grass grade allows you know so sort of like a grass growth within the form of uh, concrete blocks, and then you know it just uh, you know it allows water goes into the ground. So that's why we use we use it to reduce the the imperme uh, impermeable um, uh, hard surface area. Great. Uh, if I could just follow up then on one more question. You, you're probably sure. very familiar with this area uh, that I'm referring to um, based on that response. So just yes. uh, so south of this area, there's an outdoor amenity space. Yes. And then there's a, a corner of the building there, um, which would be kind of diagonal to one of the large trees that can, that's going to be retained in that that's corner. That's going to be retained, yes. yes. Yeah. Do you, do you know if the, that corner of the building, it does kind of jet out into that edge of the tree protection area will it be uh will there be a lot of foundation work be beyond the exterior of the building uh no uh no based on the arborist report uh, uh the the tree uh, tree root safety zone will be away from the foundation so there's nothing there's going to be no foundation work extruding into that tree tree root uh, safety zone um, the area next to the tree is going to be like a manatee space where, you know, children are going to be play in that area under the tree. So, oh, you know, I just wanted to add something, you know, to the uh, concrete uh, grass crate. Um, the area was mainly for parking. It's not like for parking. It's like for, for a big vehicle turn around, like, for example, um, garbage trucks, right? So um, at the time... When the trucks come in, you know, you can use that area as a turnaround because it's hard, right? It's, it's taking a lot of load, a vehicle load. And also, at the same time, it allows the rainwater to get into the ground. So that's why we use grass crate. 
something, uh, the area to the south uh, is the area where children play um, around the tree. Not only we, we're not only save the tree, but also create sort of like an outdoor amenity allows uh, the residents and the children's play in the in that area. You know, and then and, and, and the, the arbor really? ensure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Guan. That, that okay. I really appreciate you being here to answer those questions and oh, explaining that. I hope to see more of that utilized in the city. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. We'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any opposed? That's carried. Someone move adjournment? Move adjournment. All right. We're now adjourned.